So I've disappeared for a while, but I'm back and I'm not gone. Um, <laughs> uh, I haven't lost interest in the project or anything like that. Um, I just got a bit sidetracked with this cool um, algorithm library called Wave Function Collapse. And the name doesn't really tell you anything, but it generates bitmaps and tile maps based on uh, basically, you know, very simple inputs. So if I zoom in a little bit here. These are the inputs that you can provide to uh, wave function collapse, and it generates the content on the right. And you know it's it's sort of cool. You know you can generate mazes and like this is sort of like rooms if you have sort of a, a dungeon crawler sort of thing. Um, but the things that I was more interested in is um, this one down here at the bottom. Uh, well, it's a little bit hard to see still, but. Um, Basically, you know, there's a depiction here, it's called Platformer, is the name of the example, and you have these, um, you know, there's a, a roof, and then there's a ground, and then there's water that needs to stay inside inside the, the, the wells, and then there's vines or something coming down. And it can take this simple input and make much larger extrapolations based on that. And I thought that was really cool, um, namely that Basically, you can design a level or an entire sort of world um, in terms of like Terraria or something. If you were to produce a sufficiently large slice of this and extrapolate it out into this this larger thing, um, and like if you imagine if you had like little little pink square, like a single pink pixel on top of some of these plateaus, uh, that could represent different sort of items in the game. It could be like a, a chest or something, and you could have little, little caverns inside that represent that uh, represent a, some sort of room. And then based on how often you put those rooms in um, in your source image, it'll sort of use that in, in the output image because it keeps track of the ratio of different sort of tiles and tries to maintain that same ratio over here. So because like, uh, you know, 40% of the level by horizontal width is, is water, or 30% or something. It tries to maintain that same... I mean, it looks like it's a little bit drier than that, but uh, it's, it's overall trying to maintain that same sort of ratio. So, if you had something like that, and you were, and you were like, well, there's not enough chests, so there's too many chests, and you're using pink pixels to denote that, you could actually just go into the picture and change the pixel, and that would change the number of chests you had. Uh, which, um, on the one hand, it would be really cool that, like, anyone could design a level and just, you know, copy-paste this image and tweak it. Uh, on the other hand, it's still pretty imprecise. Like, if you, if you wanted to say, uh, there are no, you know, like, no deep pits like this, if it's, if the character needs to be able to jump between them all, like, there's a few places that you wouldn't really be able to get out of, like, like this hole right here. Um, in any case, uh, what I've been doing is I ported this entire uh, library, which is written in C Sharp, um, over to Java, or over to Kotlin. And I have my own repository called Collapse, with a K, because it's Kotlin. Um, and I did a little bit more than that. I also created a viewer, because normally you, there's no viewer, it's just uh, a command line program that you run. And um, so here's, here's Platformer again, and you can you know, zoom it in, and the settings, to make it, to make the settings the same, um, as, uh, as the output that we were seeing before, um, in the, uh, on the webpage, uh, it looks something like this. Unfortunately, it does take a while to render, uh, and you can change the refresh rate to determine how, how much time is spent drawing the picture. Um, if we do something a little bit smaller, like this, you can see it, it does, it's a lot faster. Um, and so th that's another that's another possible image, and um, yeah, so. Uh, this is just a cool little project. Um, 
and I don't think I'm actually going to use it in game development uh, in in uh, my paradise because um, I don't know. Like like I said, um, it doesn't really give you a lot of control. Like these these ones tend to have really like these pictures tend to have these really low walls, and I don't know how you would how you would change that based on based on this input. Um, I think you just have to fiddle like with different settings and just hope that one of those settings did what you want. And if not, then you have to sort of post-process the image anyway. And that starts to sound like, you know, maybe more work. If you, if you have to start with a finished output and sort of transform that into what you want, it sounds like it might be more work. So yeah, so, so M3 worked a little bit, um, with, with size 3 worked a little bit better. Um, the size is how big, like, uh, the, the chunks are that it builds the new image out of that when it's, when it's comparing for similarities. Anyway, so, um, I just, I thought that was cool, and, but it was sort of a, a week out of my life that I was scrambling to port the algorithm over and build this thing. So, yeah, it was fun, but, um, I'm, I'm getting back into my Paradise game development now.